We're joined by Marnie, also known as GA Maniac, and he's going to show off his second place nationals Water Lorraine deck profile. So let's have a have yeah. a look. Small disclaimer: um, I'm not going to share every little detail because uh, I need some edge for worlds uh, if I play this deck. Yeah. Um, obviously, well versed in half a dozen others, so watch out for what I play. You'll have no idea, competitors. Yeah. But yeah, for this deck, we're mucking around with it for a while. James uh, was playing something similar. One of our locals is very good. I played the mirror match, I thought, too many times. I hated it. Like, we just, hit, like, whoever started would play a turn one lunette, and then the other one would cry and, like, generally lose. But that was an interesting progression. Anyway, you'll see no lunettes in this list. Haha. -ha. But yeah, uh, the night before I ended up, I guess the main thing I would say about this deck is that the idea uh, literally on the Friday night in Melbourne was be proactive. So I just wanted to be super proactive and aggressive and just get the job done. Um, and of course there's a card which we all know coming up soon in the regalia material deck allows this deck to attack on two different angles. So you're going in with allies and then as and when that's not working out, you just go into like four, eight, 12 plus damage with Scepter. So I'll start with the sideboard. Um, we play this card because uh, Xander's a difficult matchup. Mm. And when you play this at the right time with something in your hand, like a deflecting edge, you just win the game basically as long as you've done enough damage before. So that, I maybe could have had three. And the irony was I was lucky enough to only play one Xander in the ninth round. And I hadn't sighted these in then, of course, for the whole rest of the day or two days. And I forgot to put them in, in the second game. <laughs> um, and in both of our games, I literally had, I think, seven plus allies on the board. So, you know, if I could have just remembered to sight it, it might have been a different story. Yeah. I lost to her, but anyway. To Morgan, and then as a lot of ally decks seem to do, I went for more regalia slots. Um, playing baubles in your main, you kind of want to have options siding out, mm -hmm. um, and you want a bit more tech. So, I mean, this card, Time Bright into Water, can be useful. Viridian Trinket, we all know what that does. Of course, it's constant, not banished, but I like the original foil. Tariff Ring, strangely, we've talked about it a lot. It's actually a similar card to this card in a weird way. You know, bring this out the right time, they can't interrupt your turn bring this out at the right time. They also don't get a turn, but on their attack. So yeah, yeah. we all know what it does. Um, this card, obviously, um, all right into Scepter um, and, you know, Merlins and just maybe giving you that one extra turn to try and win. Nullifying Lantern, I, you know, it almost seems 50-50 these days. People are either like, oh, I'll respect like the fire graveyard yeah. decks or I won't. I just thought in a bigger event, you know, with 10 rounds potentially, if I make the cut, I want this card just in case. And of course I play Fracturize, so it makes it better, I think, in water. This card was a bit of spice, you know, again, it seems like one a lot of people forget about or just don't put in their deck. Obviously it's been in Xander, you know, pretty much every Xander list these days. But outside of that, just for the fact that we're playing Lorraine and, you know, level two is 24 and level three is 28 and you're playing some prevention like deflecting, this I just thought could be a real broken card maybe into yeah. some matchups. I think I maybe got it off once and it was, yeah, so who knows. And then Drawn Blade is in the side. Mainly we don't run a lot of floating, so you don't get kind of the extra, extra value off it. But into probably some ally. The idea was mainly into like ally decks. But mm. It's probably better, it just gives you another weapon and then if you see a ghost or whatever, you could put it back. It was kind of a stretch card for like a grindier, grindier game. So as a side, to be honest, I'm kind of like, if I'm playing this deck, I'm probably going to three of these. And then a lot of this, I actually don't care about. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Like to be blunt, the, the deck's that good. And I think like one thing I haven't heard said is water cards kind of give you extra regalia ability in a way. Like you're getting all these cards that do things like your regalia can do. So yeah, you have a lot of main deck like useful stuff. Spirit of Water, obviously draw seven. We contemplated playing Serene as well. And if you go second. Oh, I see. Yeah, when we were on Lunette still and you know, Gildas in here, going second in an ally mirror, you just bring out Serene and then you balance things straight away again as well. But I just don't think it's good enough. One less card and you don't play enough crux so you know it's not great. Scepter, this is the card I was saying before, does four damage every time obviously that's awesome. All I will say I won't, as I said before I won't go into details too much of game states and things but 
Don't ignore the second part of this ability. It is sometimes relevant. Lorraine, she brings out a free sword, which, you know, uh, I've heard it said is pretty good, right? Because I've seen Water Xanders and, you know, even like Water Tenoris um, brings out his Bulwark in a separate turn. Well, she just brings out either yeah, of these yeah. straight away. So it's a free turn card, basically, and one extra health and a lot of champs. Level two can get you a card back, obviously. Just really good. The amount of times that that goes into face is, is quite often anyway. And then Spirit Ruler, pretty important choice of level three for this deck and with what we decided to play, which we'll cover in a sec. Three baubles, again, decided to respect wind and of course water and of course fire. So we just play all three because we really want the draw. And we do have a GCR because of course GCR is really good and does it without them having to have an element. And then I actually, talking about being proactive uh, and aggressive, I decided to play this. And it's funny because the quote's from Gildas. And the thing is when you play a turn, like you have a number of cards sometimes where you just balance Gildas and you don't particularly think you'll play anything like in their turn. So there's like a cycle sometimes where you just bring this out and it just sits there. And then yeah. whenever an ally dies, you just get the draw. So it's actually really good. And it turned out like it's pretty good into like Urge of Flames or, you know, non-attack damage, like removal. Bulwark, I felt was quite a, I don't know, smart pick. I was literally walking home from the bus one night, I think early in the week we went to Melbourne. And I was just like, hang on, like this Bulwark's real good with like Tony and people were like looking at it. Like maybe it's insane in this deck. And um, it is, so yeah. <laughs> that's that. And then True Sight, obviously just another two durability and you know, through stealth and all that. So that's pretty good. So yeah, that Regalia deck, I've gone back and forth and I've wondered, and I've played some worse versions over the last couple of weeks, but like, this is actually not, not a bad Regalia pile, yeah. in my opinion. So then the card that pairs, in my opinion, pairs with Spirit Ruler is this card. It's very good. It's zero, it's fast. And again, if you read all of the text, it's not always just a five at face. Um, in ally mirrors occasionally, you just swing with your one guy and then wipe their board which is crazy when you're yeah. in that grindy endgame thing. So yeah, this was awesome. Um, I've tried to, I didn't like it because I didn't see it much and I don't think four is necessary. I ran one Ghost of Pendragon. This is a very interesting one too, back and forth on numbers, etc. But the truth is that you often win games at spirit or level one or you know, sometimes just level two for kill. And so you just can't play it that often. And saying that I did have this copy and, and there were a couple of games into ally matchups where I thought like I drew it early and it kind of gave me an additional way to play or some, you know, something to play toward. So yeah, he's all right. One of the best cards for water is this card or Kohazi Trapper. I mean, just sitting there and having your counter on you with him untapped or awake is like hard for your opponents. Yeah. <laughs> In different match, loads of different matchups. It's it's great. Snow Fairy, she's also pretty nice. There's been an increase, I feel, in the meta over the last couple months of Library Witch and a yeah, few different 100%. decks. And so this is awesome for that and for Stalwarts. It doesn't really matter if they like cremation it away because you know in some scenarios they want to leave it out to block, so they can't have that choice <laughs> when you Snow Fairy. Of course, into you know a lot of mirrors and stuff, it's good. Yeah, I think overall it's still worth playing there are you know with wind it's it's average because you tap a dude they just can bounce it back or zephyr it or whatever yeah. so it's an interesting card but you know at, even in the worst of scenarios it, it attacks for one every turn with stealth so that's pretty neat paladin this is actually a card like despite having loads of games and playing lots of ga i feel like i can still learn how to use this card better and utilize it better i almost have never done this second ability which i feel like maybe sometimes i should be so yeah. that's something i want to practice more but you know obviously it's a good card it's just a better um esteem night fracturize times four again james and i have discussed numbers of this card. Sometimes it just feels really irrelevant, but I think a two cost fast floating is really good. You know, every other deck like that wants to plays them like fast cure, exercise, but this is one that does something a lot more significant in certain scenarios. Yeah. So yeah, overall this card's pretty good. Probably needs to stay. Although I have to say, do watch for the downside of giving your opponent a, a rock. Yeah, yeah, like it's actually real bad sometimes. And be careful when you play it into Merlin. Freezing Hail, I've wanted to play four. I've sometimes thought I could cut to two because I don't need more. But overall this card's really good. 
and again looking at their champion sometimes as opposed to just like ally, like finishing an ally or killing a fairy or a stalwart but yeah th this card's great and it's kind of nice that it adds to uh, with scepter and then dispersion it's another way to just burn them in the face like when they bring out terrafring to survive yeah. and then you're just like well you're dead and they're like oh so <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Frostbind, this card I am very interested about World Championships because it's obviously gonna be knowing what's in people's decks by the time we sit and play. This card seems really good just in its existence into closed deck list tournaments because I've considered running like zero to two sometimes just because my opponents will play around it if I'm Water Spirit, and then I might not even have it in the deck. Yeah. And the other thing is when they play around it, it becomes bad because you can't stop the thing. At best, you just make them put two cards down. So very interesting card. Four of these, you'd hope some people were less optimal players or didn't know about resoluting in your recollection. <laughs> Sometimes you get them good there, but you know, playing in high level, this is still an important card um, against you know Merlin's big swings, against Xander doing his Thieving cuts, he doesn't draw anymore. Into ally mirrors, yeah, it's pretty good. Savage Slash. This card floats once you're at level one, and it's just two attack for two. Sometimes you might, you know, balance Gildas attack and then just whack them with this, and then late game you're like, oh, I can go level two for one card. This card is really good. I feel like it's this or the Seeking Shot, which I don't have in the deck. One's defensive, one's proactive, but you know, how good Seeking Shot into like Xander? Yeah. Not very good. So this is pretty good. <laughs> And I think, again, people don't often think about when you just have one card up in hand and say your sword's out. Yeah, 100%. Right? And I actually balanced Gildas with this card the other day, like when I was at five card <laughs> or like low cards or something, and I managed to do something, and then I just like attack with Gildas. They didn't respond like with any trick, and I just laid this on my guy for no reason but balance Gildas and hit for three more, so. This card has to be said for the beautiful young uh, Guardian human that she might be the best card for allies, period. Yeah. <laughs> it's a two cost, two, three, essentially. And it just allows, like in certain games where you think you can, it allows like two allies on turn one when you're on the play. Mm. which is just massively significant. Knowing that, or hoping that she'll go to two, right? Because like people have played Banner Knights or the durability check. Weaponsmith. Weaponsmith, yeah. But the fact this can just go to like the same as your all your other three costs, but it's two is just yeah. nuts. Lurking, he's really good as we all know. Again, sort of like Paladin, I want to explore and just learn how to play more diversely with his second ability because that seems pretty nuts, mm -hmm. um, being able to just retaliate at things. Could help you kill an ally or just deal them more damage when they feel like they have to attack you. You know, put them in a spot where they like have to attack your guy or have to attack you or whatever. And then you're just like, well, if you do that, you're gonna take two. Um, mm -hmm. at no cost of like my ally dying. Honestly, this this guy, even though he's worse than Paladin, he was one reason why I think I went to Lorraine and explored Lorraine a bit more as one of the like f now four or five options of water ally deck. Just having eight interceptors uh, when like Ranger exists and stuff like, you know, the odd other few scenarios that might be relevant, but yeah, having eight interceptors is good. Dungeon Guide, I almost cut this to three on Friday night at Melbourne. And James was like, are you an idiot? And I was like, I don't think so. So I kept four in. In fairness to me, like, it sucks when you have two because you very rarely are going to, like, dungeon to level two. So, you know, like most decks, you're going to just try to play it maybe to go three. And, it, you know, I have had a few games where I've literally seen three, like, in my game. And that is average. But on the whole, like, when you want to see it, you win, you know, you're winning the game. So it's, it obviously outweighs in that sense. But shout out to Sean, Sean Yang, who played a a spicy uh, water Xander ally deck and he actually only had two in his main and a level two champ and then he had a third and a level three in his sideboard so that was an interesting test and he did pretty well he came like six or something train sharpshooter so this was part of my proactiveness this was the biggest change from on the friday night i think i had like maybe another ghost of pen dragon you know maybe another like frostbind or freezing hail or something you know cards like that that i just shaved to three or i like took the second ghosts out and i was like i just want more three two threes like to balance gildas yeah. and to just smash face and to have board presence and it worked out 
clearly. So that was great. Maybe lunettes, cut some lunettes. And then of course, the, the master. This is so good, Gildas. Yeah. I mean, you can't debate or argue with just slapping three down, whacking them for four. That man, if she lives, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's even worse for them, so. But um, that's it, in a nutshell. Quite an interesting deck. You can just be aggressive and like, go right that. But also, it can be super skill intensive and you can go yeah. on loads of different routes and stuff. Um, I think you do want to learn your matchups and figure out your plans, which is still a work in progress for me if I'm to play it. But yeah, we'll see whether it ends up being this or Merlin or Rye or Wind to Norris. Yeah. Who knows? For, um, yeah, for Worlds. But thanks for the video, Levi. Awesome. And, and thanks for being part of, you know, Card Merch and yeah. Locals. If you, if you do want to check out the video on the Card Merch channel, it will be in the description. Yes, Marnie yeah. talking more over the day and how it went. So yeah, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you yeah, for watching. Yeah, good luck for Worlds. Big ups, Levi TCG. <laughs> Yo! If you're looking to buy some affordable Grand Archive singles for your deck, make sure to check out Card Merch and Nelson. And if you want to get a discount and help support the channel, Use code LEVITCG for 5% off on your order.